नमस्कार वेलकम टू डैलस मिरर ऑन डी सी प्लाजा टी वी इन कोलेब्रेशन विथ रेडियो करिश्मा आम योर होस्ट करिश्मा हिमत सिंघानी इन डैलस मिरर वी हैव अ वेरी डिस्टिंगविश गेस्ट विथ अस इन आर स्टूडियो एंड हिज नेम इज पद्मश्री डॉक्टर संत सिंह विरमानी डॉक्टर विरमानी इज ए इंटरनेशनली रेकग्नाइज लीडर ऑफ हाइब्रिड राइस टेक्नोलॉजी डेवलपमेंट एंड डिसमिनेशन इन ट्रॉपिकल कंट्रीज आउटसाइड चाइना currently the technology developed by him in collaboration with several countries is being used by rice farmers in an area of 5 million hectares producing about 6 million tons of extra paddy worth 1.5 billion dollars every year about 80 private seed companies around the world are currently involved in developing and disseminating this technology and having business worth 120 million dollars every year currently dr virmani is residing in plano dr virmani has been involved in community service in north texas through frisco rotary club and a voluntary organization m core that is multicultural outreach round table in plano mayor's office it's our great pleasure and an honor to have him here with us and talk little bit about his work and his personal life here in Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex Dr Virmani welcome to the studio of Desi Plaza TV Thank how you. are you doing today Thank you I'm doing fine Um Dr Virmani I would for my um viewers I would like to know more about you that where did you where actually you come from originally from India and uh, where did you study and uh, tell us more about your background to our viewers Well Krishna I started actually my career or uh, originally I should go back I was born in what is now in Pakistan in northwest frontier province mm-hmm. and migrated to India in 1947 mm-hmm. and I had started by schooling in Jaipur Rajasthan mm-hmm. then for middle school i was in delhi then from high school onward up to a masters in agriculture i was in madhya pradesh mm-hmm. and after that uh, i moved to punjab mm-hmm. and got my phd from punjab agriculture university mm-hmm. so you can say that i have been going around yes <laughs> from the time i was born uh-huh. and because of different circumstances Mm-hmm. uh to different parts of the country mm-hmm. and uh, after my phd mm-hmm. i moved to international rice research institute mm-hmm. in the philippines mm-hmm. where i started my career professional career and then since then i have been outside india mm-hmm. until now and i have uh, worked in the philippines I worked in the uh, International Institute of Tropical Agriculture in Africa mm-hmm. in West Africa I was in Liberia for 6 years mm-hmm. and then came back to Philippines again mm-hmm. in 1979 mm-hmm. and I retired from that institute in 2006 when I came to Plano to wow. set, settle up <laughs> so you can say that mm-hmm. uh, uh, रहने को घर नहीं है सारा जहां जहां हमारा हमारा बैकग्राउंड यस सो यू आर ट्रूली ग्लोबल पर्सनालिटी बेसिकली लिविंग इन प्लेनो टेक्सास हाउ प्रिवलेज वी आर वेल डॉक्टर बिरवानी आई वुड लाइक टू नो मोर अबाउट योर वर्क गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया ऑनर्ड यू विद पद्मश्री एंड प्रवासी भारतीय अवार्ड and डेफिनेटली इट वॉज ए रिकग्नेशन फॉर योर एस्टीम वर्क दैट यू डिड एंड दैट हेल्प कंट्री ग्रो especially the time of green revolution well your research area you were research scientist would you like to tell our viewers um were you already interested in research becoming a scientist or was it the destiny well it was again a coincidence when after my middle school in delhi i went to madhya pradesh mm-hmm. and uh, my father and mother they were living in a a uh, small town mm-hmm. and they were, my father was involved in uh, <coughs> uh forest 
business, like logging business, mm -hmm. forest contractor in Madhya Pradesh. Mm -hmm. So I started schooling there and it so happened after two months of my, it was a school which was uh, converted from a high middle school to high school, mm -hmm. the year I joined there. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I started studying the normal subjects. Mm -hmm. But it was just by a coincidence after two months I was uh, studying all those uh, art subjects. Mm -hmm. Order comes from the government of Madhya Pradesh mm -hmm. that this school is a rural school, so this will become an agriculture high school. Okay. So we started studying agriculture. agriculture. <laughs> That's how I got introduced uh -huh. to agriculture. Mm -hmm. My parents said, okay, uh, since he was working in the forest business, mm -hmm. so in people with agriculture background can become rangers and the district forest development officers, divisional forest development officers. This is as far officer. they could think. Yes. So th 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 okay, beta, this is a good line. Mm -hmm. uh, you can become. DFO mm -hmm. one day. Mm -hmm. So that's how I started mm -hmm. in agriculture. So after high school, mm -hmm. then I went to agriculture college. Mm -hmm. And then my exposure to agriculture continued. And uh, in BSc agriculture, I was introduced with the subject known as uh, genetics. And I liked that subject very mm -hmm. much. Mm -hmm. And I became interested in, in with, for my master's. I did my master's in agriculture botany with ag genetics and plant breeding as mm -hmm. a uh, background. Mm -hmm. So after that, uh, I went to Ludhiana, mm -hmm. Punjab Agriculture University, mm -hmm. and worked there for two years, mm -hmm. and then got admission in PhD. And uh, I was given, uh, I was awarded University Grants uh, Commission Fellowship mm -hmm. in India and I got, I resigned from my job and I co completed my PhD with that fellowship. Mm -hmm. And after that, I, my professor in the year 1967 mm -hmm. moved to uh, International Rice Research Institute in the Philippines okay. as Assistant Director General. Mm -hmm. And at that time, a lot of people were moving from India to USA, from outside India mm -hmm, for, mm -hmm. for the studies or for their careers. Mm -hmm. So when I, my professor came on home leave to Ludhiana mm -hmm. in 1967, mm -hmm. uh, uh, 68, I asked him also that can I go out of India mm -hmm. and uh, it so happened that uh, since uh, I was a good student mm -hmm. and had done a good work with, mm -hmm. with him. So about uh, eight months before completion of my PhD, I go to the department mm -hmm. and uh, my then professor asked me, Dr. Mani, do you want to go abroad? Mm -hmm. I was surprised. I said, mm -hmm. I have not applied anywhere. Mm -hmm. So he said, come, come after some time to my office. I will ask you and tell you the in some, some information good for mm -hmm. you. So I go to his office and he says, you have an invitation to go and work in the International Rice Research Institute under the leadership of Dr. Atwal, who was our professor. Wow, okay. So that's how I got... Dr. Atwal was directly involved in Green Revolution as well. Later. Yes, okay. he, he was a, a, a origin, originally was a, a wheat breeder in mm -hmm. Punjab mm -hmm. Agriculture University and head of the department of mm -hmm. plant breeding. And he was instrumental in bringing the high yielding wheat varieties, mm -hmm. uh, introducing them to Punjab. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was successful in mm -hmm. uh, revolution, uh, the Green Revolution in in, in, in Punjab. India, yeah. In Punjab. In Punjab. In so, uh, you 
started working with him in that Rice Institute in, in Philippines. Yes. And at that time, already the Green Revolution had taken place. Okay. The yield of rice had increased from about two tons to two and a half, three tons level to about eight tons, mm -hmm. nine tons. So th the scientific question came just out of curiosity whether this yield level is the maximum rice can give or we can go higher. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And one idea that was uh, explored at that time by Dr. Wall and myself as, as a uh, mm -hmm. uh, associate mm -hmm. to look at hybrid rice, mm -hmm. which is means that you develop strains of rice by making first generation cross of two parents mm -hmm. and that across uh, is showing hybrid vigor. Mm -hmm. So, exploiting the phenomena of hybrid vigor mm -hmm. was the basis for developing hybrid rice technology. So, in the initial stages, nobody believed that it, it was uh, going to happen mm -hmm. or it was possible, but we as an exploratory mm -hmm. subject, we took that challenge. Uh -huh and did some initial work mm -hmm. and uh, it so happened then in 1970, it was 1981, mm -hmm. we had an international rice conference mm -hmm. in International Rice Research Institute where mm -hmm. I was working and this subject was discussed during the international conference. Mm -hmm. But the scientists from all over the world, mm -hmm. including the Nobel uh, Peace Prize uh, scientist, Dr. Uh, Borlaug, mm -hmm. he was also there. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was uh, concluded that perhaps this, the te this technology was good to explore, but this was at the right time to do that ah, okay. because the, the question was we had increased the yield from two three tons level to eight tons. eight tons and the question was it is more important to stabilize the yield at eight tons level mm -hmm. rather than increasing it further okay. at that time. So this was the subject was shelved. Oh, okay. Where, which on which you were working? And on, on okay. which I was working. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, that was uh, in 1970, 70, 71, sorry. Okay, it yeah, 71. okay. And at 72, I left uh, in month of June. And uh, then <coughs> after I left, I had a chance to, to go to the International Institute of Tropical Agriculture in uh, West Africa. Okay and I spent there from 73 to 79, okay. six years and during that period uh, in 1977, mm -hmm. some Chinese scientists came to International Rice Research Institute mm -hmm. and they announced that they have successfully developed hybrid rice. Okay. In China. Okay. And it surprised everybody, including the international scientists working at the yes. International Rice Research Institute. Mm -hmm. So it took them some time to confirm, but Chinese had done it, uh -huh. and they had commercialized that technology. And after it was confirmed, then they decided mm -hmm. to uh, explore the possibility of that technology outside China. And again, it so happened, it was a coincidence that I was coming to USA for sabbatical leave for mm -hmm. one year in 1979-80. Dr. Purmani, I would like, I, I'm so sorry that I'm interrupting you, but it's a time to take a short break. And when we come back, okay. we will talk about your uh, you know that what happened next because this okay. is very interesting. Okay. We'll take a short break and come back. Welcome back. 
You're watching Dallas Mirror on Desi Plaza TV in collaboration with Radio Karishma, and I'm your host, Karishma. And we are in conversation with Padmashri Dr. Sun Singh Virmani. Welcome back, uh, Dr. Virmani. And before we took the break, um, we were talking about how you were working on one certain technology, and that whole project got shelved. And then after a few years, China came up with the same technology, and then they said that we are the number one leaders in that technology. So how did it go with you? I mean, what happened next? Well, I was in Africa when I mm -hmm. learned about that, uh -huh. and I really felt bad that, well, why? You could have been the leader I, in that technology. I, why did we Absolutely. discontinue this work? But anyway, mm -hmm. and then in 1979, mm -hmm. I was about to come to USA. Mm -hmm for one year, uh, but then my institute in the Philippines, mm -hmm. they made up their mind to revive that work. Okay, okay. And then they uh, they asked me, instead of going to USA, why don't you come here for okay. sabbatical leave mm -hmm. for one year, and we will explore mm -hmm. the, that same technology that mm -hmm. you had uh, started. Mm -hmm. So I immediately decided yeah. to go there, uh -huh. and uh, so th that's how I revived that uh, technology, and uh, I established collaboration with China. Uh -huh. I identified scientists from different countries, mm -hmm. including India, Philippines, Indonesia, mm -hmm. Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, mm -hmm. and took them to China. Mm -hmm and showed them what they had done. Uh -huh. And then I had started that work in in the Philippines at mm -hmm. my institute. And then I also tried to bring them to the Philippines to show <laughs> how we, mm -hmm. we were doing their research. And I was guiding them how they can start the same thing mm -hmm. in their country. Achha. But my objective was to help them mm -hmm. to develop the technology uh -huh. and uh, to help them to help themselves, okay. Rather than I do everything for them and then they mm -hmm. they they follow that. Uh, it was very uh, more convenient and more appropriate for me and for them to seek guidance and then work there in their own country under their own environment, mm -hmm. so that whatever they 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 develop it will be adaptable to their conditions. So uh, how mm. did uh, your uh, developed technology help India? So so it took several years mm -hmm. and there was a lot of uh, also uh, kind of uh, uh, concern. Some scientists in India did not think that it should be, po it will be possible. Mm -hmm. In rice? In rice. Okay. So there was uh, slow progress, uh -huh. but I did not give up, and I had to continuously go there mm -hmm. and uh, show them whatever progress we were making in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. will share my material with them, mm -hmm. uh, and and that's uh, how gradually started. And uh, th then it took almost about ten to twelve years. Okay of research work and training and collaboration with them mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that uh, India for the first time developed the hybrid rice uh, for their own use. Okay. And it was in uh, early 90s. Okay, okay. So since then, uh, India has uh, from zero hybrid rice, it has moved to, now this year it was 2.8 million hectares in wow. India. Wow, wow. Mm -hmm. And about uh, 2.2 million outside India. Oh, wow. So total of 5 million hectares uh -huh. is being grown outside China. Uh -huh. uh, China is growing in area of 16 million hectares. So well behind still, and, yes. And uh, countries outside China are way behind still. But they they are making progress slow and steady, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, considering that uh, there are several uh, uh, aspects that they have to be working uh, mm -hmm. uh, to to make progress faster. But I would say that uh, five million hectares is still mm -hmm. compared to nothing 
yes. before is yes. still something and it is giving about 6 million tons of extra paddy wow which is wow. what uh, about uh, 1.5 billion dollars mm -hmm. worth mm -hmm. yeah and uh, there are several private seed companies are involved in producing mm -hmm. the seed of the hybrids mm -hmm. and selling it to the farmers mm -hmm. every year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And farmers get about 1.5 to 1.5 ton extra yield. Mm -hmm. And that is worth uh, about uh, 250 uh, dollars. Uh -huh. And they have to get, uh, they have to spend about 20 five to thirty dollars mm -hmm. extra on seed mm -hmm. every year so but still it is a profitable job for them mm -hmm. but in the normal rice varieties mm -hmm. which are not hybrid mm -hmm. the advantage is that the farmer can use its mm -hmm. own seed mm -hmm. for growing this own next year's crop but in hybrids, they have to buy the seed every year. If, ah, they, okay. if they use that seed, it will not give them the advantage Correct. that they have uh -huh. for okay. them. So that's that's how the so things have progressed. I mean, uh, it I can I can say easily that it helped the ongoing process of a re green revolution indirectly. Your research and India from uh, you know from struggling uh, to feed its own population now we are the exporter of rice yeah well that's yeah. because not because of the hybrid rice because of the others the the green revolution technology yes that that and now uh, the the and this technology was a minuscule part the, of that yes this but is as also, they say yes. uh, every little things adds up yes and yes. that's how the indian government had actually uh, they have honored and you as padmashri yes and so uh, since uh, uh, this technology from a scratch, mm -hmm. I was instrumental in helping India to reach 2.8. Uh, by the time I retired, it was about 1.5 mm -hmm. million hectares, mm -hmm. but now it's 2.8 million okay. hectares. So, recognizing my contributions mm -hmm. from scratch mm -hmm. to 1.5 million mm -hmm. hectares, I was uh, given this recognition of Padma Shri Award. And then since I was working outside as a non-resident Indian mm -hmm. and helping the world, mm -hmm. they also uh, honored me in 2005 through my Pravasi Bharti Award. And uh, sir, now that you have retired, you, you decided to uh, live in Plano, Texas. Um, you are retired, but then you are busy with a lot of other humanitarian work. Would you like to share that with us? Yeah, the reason I came to Plano was because uh, my children uh, had okay. moved. Uh, mm -hmm. for they were in uh, North East India before, uh, North East USA before, uh -huh. but the, then they moved to Plano because the mm -hmm. weather was good. Good and everything. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And in 2004, when I visited my children mm -hmm. here, I liked city of Plano very uh -huh, much. Uh -huh. uh, it's the way it is organized, the way it is the uh, whole setup. So I decided that I would like to move there. And then it so happened then uh, because of my international recognition uh -huh. and all that, I was given permanent resident uh, uh, without any sponsorship. Okay, and, okay, and that's awesome. special category. Uh -huh. uh, persons of extraordinary ability. Okay. So when I was, I got that green card uh, in 14 months uh, uh -huh. after my application without any sponsorship from uh -huh. children. So uh, everybody in the family said that why do I have to go and to India and shuttle between here and uh, yeah. India. So I, since I like Plano, so I mm -hmm. said, okay, we'll uh, we'll settle in Plano. So you are involved mm -hmm. in Plano uh, city uh, activities as well. Yeah. Tell us more about that. M4. So so, yeah. so when I came here, so first for first four years, mm -hmm. I was uh, part part time involved in uh, consultancy, uh, providing consultancy to private seed companies uh -huh. uh, uh -huh. in USA uh -huh. and outside USA. But uh, when I came here, I found that how to keep myself busy when mm -hmm. I have time. I came across this uh, organization was a Multicultural Outreach Roundtable in mm -hmm. Plano. Mm -hmm. uh, so I 
thought I will spend time. The mm -hmm. reason this organization is uh, there in mayor's office in Plano mm -hmm. is because uh, Plano is a very uh, unique city in uh -huh. USA in the sense that it, in the population of 270,000 people, mm -hmm. there are 66 nationalities. Wow. Wow. Uh, we, I'm sure a lot of Plano residents wouldn't we, know that. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. So the objective of this organization is how to bring uh, awareness among different cultures. Of cultural uh, uh, back, people from different cultural backgrounds mm -hmm, mm -hmm. living in Plano. So, so they organize different events mm -hmm, uh -huh. in the city like uh, international festival, mm -hmm. Asian festival, mm -hmm. uh, they organize national day of prayer. Mm -hmm. Uh, citizenship seminars, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. several activities which bring the people together, together. Uh, from different cultural backgrounds. And then I, when I was in the Philippines, I had uh, joined Rotary Club mm -hmm. in the Philippines in 1987. Uh -huh. And I was familiar with what Rotary Club does uh, okay. in the community, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. both local as well as internationally. So when I came, moved to the to Plano, I joined also Rotary Club okay. in Frisco. Okay. Okay. And uh, since then, since 2007, I am also a Rotarian in mm -hmm. in Frisco Rotary mm -hmm. Club. And uh, since 1987, I'm a Rotarian. Mm -hmm. uh, so, in that club also we have a local uh, uh, community service mm -hmm. uh, uh, affairs. One of the projects that we have in, in our Rotary Club was, there is a organization in Frisco known as Frisco Rotary, uh, sorry, Frisco Family Services. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the objective of this Frisco Family Services is to provide it's a grocery store uh -huh, uh -huh. in Frisco, which provides free grocery to the people who are economically broke mm -hmm, for mm -hmm. whatever reason for several weeks mm -hmm. until they get established themselves. Wow, okay. So in that uh, grocery store, our Rotary Club was uh, sponsoring the rice shelf. Okay. So the rice that was provided in the shell mm -hmm. was given by the, uh, given by the Rotary Club because by the money that was brought from the Rotary Club. So since I am my background was in rice, yes. the idea came to me that why not I mobilize the Indian community in Dallas yes. to provide uh, to sponsor that uh, shelf. Yes. And normally the general feeling is that we from people from India are here to earn some living here and all that. But uh, I thought this is a small thing. Yes. But it will also give an indication that we also contribute to the community where we live. Where we in live. A, in a yes. small, Usually small we are known that we always try take. and help our own country. Yes. From um, here to there, yes. basically. Yes. So with that objective, I mobilized our people and mm -hmm. for the past uh, four or five years uh -huh. we have been sponsoring that uh, shelf uh -huh. and it's written there that uh, this shelf is Spons uh, sponsored by the Indian community in Dallas. Wow, that's such a so lovely that, thing. That's, uh, the, and they appreciate it very much. Yes. And well, I mean, talking to you, I think it gives me um, a really a good sense of pride and also I, I feel very inspired at the same time I see it as a message to a lot of senior citizens who come from India and they they are actually forced to settle down with their kids here you know so this is a message for them that when they come here they can actually contribute um, through getting involved in a lot of local organizations and you know be useful to the community and to the worldwide basically yeah, actually, there are a lot of uh, opportunities in yes. in Plano. Even our homeowner association, mm -hmm. they are encouraging also mm -hmm. people from different uh, backgrounds who mm -hmm. live in the in the community where mm -hmm. we are in the store diamond. Absolutely. And uh, so it is individual. Uh, if 
you are interested mm -hmm. to get involved mm -hmm. and help there are a lot of opportunities yes. we, we can we, we can all have and uh, really uh, be useful to in the community where we live. Well, with this great message I would like to thank you Dr. Virmani for giving us your precious time and inspiring many of our viewers tonight and um, in parting would you like to give any message? Well my, my message is that uh, no, no matter where, which background you come from but if you wherever you are you can always uh, think of something how you can contribute in your own way and yes. whatever maybe so it is it is not that somebody has to tell you mm -hmm. what to do and how, what, what it that, that thing has to come from inside you mm -hmm. and uh, there are opportunities if you see around yes. that we can always help each yes. other thank you so much it was wonderful talking to you thank but you. this is with this this is karishma signing off for dallas mirror this time Bye-bye and see you next time.